Okay, so I'm going to make a couple videos about this problem set. Uh, don't want them to be too long. Uh, so let's start with number one. Uh, and I'll try and go for about 20 minutes and then I'll stop and I'll start another one after. Uh, let's take a look at this one. So what is the final product of this series of reactions? So if you're really good and you remember reactions, this is easy. Uh, we can just look at this and say, oh, what is this? Well, it's a catalyst. That's what this is indicating, catalyst. It's, it's just a source of H+. You need to get used to those things. And what is this? This is a diol. And we know that diols react with ketones and aldehydes to form acetals that are cyclic. And we we've talked about this one in particular as being a good protecting group. So typically when you see this, you, you want to think, okay, uh, it'll form a cyclic acetal and maybe we're protecting something. And there is a subsequent reaction. So that's probably the strategy. We're probably protecting one of these. Let's look and see which one is this going to react with. Uh, we didn't get any other information, so we can assume one equivalent of this. We know this is catalytic. That's all we're going to need. So we're only going to react one molecule of this. Which one is it going to react with? Well, aldehydes are much better electrophiles than ketones are. Under acid catalysis, we are going to protonate one of the oxygens. We can protonate both, but we're going to protonate this one. It's going to be a very good electrophile. We're going to have this as the nucleophile that's going to attack it. And hopefully, uh, we will get to the first product in this series, uh, which is this. cyclic acetal. We didn't react with the ketone. We reacted with the aldehyde. Right? There's one carbon, two, one carbon, two, and these are the oxygens. Okay. What's the other product of this reaction? The other product of this reaction is water. We don't usually concern ourselves with water. It's easy to get. So now that we've protected it, we've this is going to be our first reaction product A. The next reaction product is actually, hopefully we recognize, we may not. We do a reduction. This is just a source of hydride, H minus, okay? And then it's a reducing agent. We need to recognize reducing agents. We see that we're going to reduce something. We now only have one carbonyl group. This is going to reduce just that one carbonyl group and what we're going to get so we're actually going to get this species we don't normally write this by the way this is H minus and then and I'm just going to put If you take a look at the notes, you get a complex mixture of these boron alkoxides. Uh, but when we work this thing up under these conditions, these acidic conditions, we're going to hydrolyze both this boron off so that we're going to get our alcohol there. And at the same time, we're going to remove this protecting group and return it to the aldehyde. So our final product then. Oops, made a mistake already. Now, if we just reacted this with the reducing agent, we're going to reduce this one first, but we're actually going to get a complex mixture uh, and we probably, we often use this to excess, we would probably, uh, if we didn't, we would get a mixture of reducing these two with most of the reduction occurring at the more electrophilic aldehyde functionality, right? Uh, so that's why we protected the aldehyde. Then we could selectively reduce just this ketone and get our final product and return 
the aldehyde so that we have this beta hydroxy aldehyde. Let's take a look at the second uh, reaction now. Show the reaction with mechanism that occurs when the compound below is exposed to ethyl magnesium bromide, which is a Grignard reagent. How would you complete the preparation of the desired product? And I say, i.e., show the workup. No words required. Uh, I'm, I don't want a description of how you would work it up. I want you to just tell me. So what are our reagents? Well, we have uh, ethyl magnesium bromide. I'm going to write that uh, right here. CH3, CH2, and now I'm going to write Mg. One of the things we want to remember if this thing is very polar with a negative charge at the carbon and a positive charge on the magnesium. So this is our nucleophile. Our nucleophile is simply, it's a strong nucleophile. In fact, we talk about this being almost ionic. It's so polar, it's almost ionic. And that's just going to attack the carbonyl carbon, then we throw the electrons up on the oxygen, and we get our first intermediate. Well, so we have a minus charge here. We still have our hydrogen hanging about, and now we put on there a CH2 group and a CH3 group. We put the ethyl group on there, and up here we have the magnesium bromide. This is kind of a salt, okay? Now, we're not interested in the magnesium bromide, uh, but right now if we did nothing else, we this would all fall out of solution be a mess. When you do this in the lab, you get a mess. You have to follow this by working it up with some aqueous acid, and we have to use at least one equivalent. Uh, now, this is strong enough to pull protons off the water, but just barely. That's why we add a source of H+. We're just going to protonate that. I'm going to put this down here because it's this is our final product. This is what we're trying to make and what we want to isolate is this secondary alcohol. Okay, that's our final product. Uh, the magnesium bromide and water, all of that, we end up washing away. We're interested in the organic product. Okay, let's take a look at number three. Show the reaction with mechanism that occurs when the compound below is exposed to water under acidic conditions. Okay, so we're going to do this reaction under acidic conditions. and we're going to expose it to water. I don't know if I need a catalytic amount or a full amount of acid, so I'm just going to put H plus for now. I'm going to actually just take this and move it down where I have some room to work. Way down here at the bottom, I should have some room. There we go. In fact, let's move it right down here. Okay, so what's going on? I'm going to put my final product over here, but I'm going to work this way. Oops. So we have an H+, plus, and we also have water. I'm going to put them both there so I don't forget them. What's the first step we want to do? Remember, we've talked about this. Whenever we see... A reaction that's done under acidic conditions, i.e. we see a proton over the arrow, the first thing we probably want to do is protonate something. So let's protonate one of these oxygens. There we go. We're just going to protonate that oxygen. Now I'm going to just copy this. Okay, let's get rid of that arrow. 
Let's get rid of those lone pairs of electrons. Okay, and we have some water. We don't need our water yet. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we've protonated an oxygen. Now we can break one of the carbon oxygen bonds. Uh, we can break either side. What you're going to find, if you break the wrong side, you're going to end up with something that's weird looking. Um, and I'll discuss in a second why we don't break off why we don't break this bond, okay? We're going to break this bond. This one right here. If we broke this one, as you're going to see in a second, this is going to lead to a carbocation. If we broke this one, we would have a primary carbocation that is not stabilized whatsoever. So let's go ahead and uh, break this bond. We're going to break the bond between the carbon and oxygen. So I'm going to place my pen right here. Oh, that one. And we're just going to break that bond and throw that pair of electrons up on that oxygen. So let's go ahead and draw this new species. Okay, so we have our phenyl ring is still there. And on that, we just broke this bond, so it's bonded to oxygen and I'm going to do this one, one, two, three carbons, one, two, three carbons, and the third carbon is bonded to OH, and we've now broken that bond, so I'm going to put it right here, okay? And the electrons went up here, so we have a positive charge. Don't forget, if you have a positive charge in your reactants, you have to have a positive charge in your products. Uh, so where's our positive charge? Well, it's right here. We have a carbocation. We can draw a resonance structure. Let me show you the resonance structure we could draw. Okay. I'm going to get rid of that positive charge on the carbon. I'm going to draw. These are resonance structures. The real structure is not this or this. It's some hybrid of the two. In other words, that positive charge is shared between that carbon, between this carbon, and this oxygen. So the real structure is some hybrid of that. Now we have to remember that we have water. So let's bring our water down with us. And I'm going to make my water like this. I'm going to put my lone pairs of electrons now because now that's going to be my nucleophile. Oops. That's my nucleophile. What's my electrophile? Well, my electrophile is this positively charged thing. Okay, and I'm just going to make one of them blue. There we go. That's our electrophile. Our nucleophile is now just going to react with our electrophile. Uh, let's get rid of the resonance structure. We no longer need it. That was just for pedagogical purposes. So let's get rid of that. So now we have a nucleophile reacting with an electrophile. We're just going to attack that electrophile. We're going to form a bond between that oxygen, uh, that oxygen right here, and this carbon.
So notice now that lone pair of electrons that was completely owned by that oxygen is now shared between that oxygen and that carbon atom. So our oxygen is now electron deficient. It's now carrying the positive charge. Now again, I want to reiterate, when you're doing reactions under acid catalysis, you start off with this H+. There's something there that's balancing that positive charge. It's the conjugate base of whatever acid you threw in there. If it was uh, sulfonic acid, like we had up here, paratoluene sulfonic acid, I won't go up, way up at the top, uh, that anion's still around. And it's just there doing nothing but balancing charge. Okay, so we have to make sure that we always carry the positive charge along with us. There it is. It moves around. There it's on the oxygen. Here it's on the carbon. It's actually shared between that carbon and that oxygen. And over here, we're on the water. Now, another thing to note, I haven't been drawing it, but all of these reactions are reversible. But we don't want to go in the backwards directions. But we do have to realize that that's a good leaving group. It could leave. All of these are reversible. But we're going to continue to move forward. So now what? Well, we need to uh, move that proton around. We need to remove move our proton, one of our protons from there. Where are we going to move it to? Well, we're either going to move it here or here. Those are the only two choices we have. But again, if we move it to here, we're kind of going backwards. We already broke that off way in the first step. So we're going to break it off here. We're going to break protonate so that we can next break that. So all we have is, is a proton shift and I'm not going to do it. You guys know something comes along and breaks that, but we're just going to move that proton from one oxygen to the other. And in fact, the way I'm doing it, you're going to see where I move it to. Okay, I'm going to move that oxygen, or that hydrogen. I want it down here, so I'm going to put it down here. Put a charge there. Now I'm just going to use my eraser and erase that hydrogen and that positive charge. So you see, I moved it from this oxygen to this oxygen. Now we can easily break this bond. I'm going to put my lone pairs of electrons on. Now I'm going to do something slightly different. Okay, this is the bond we're going to break. Oops, I want to use green arrows. I don't know why, but I do. I've been using them. We're going to break that bond, but I'm going to push it off this time. I don't have to. I could have a carbocation. And the way I've drawn this, okay, I'm breaking that bond, so I now have, I still have my phenyl ring. I've made a double bonded oxygen. It happens to still have a proton on it. So now I got three bonds to that oxygen. I gotta have a positive charge on it. And I'm just gonna leave it there. That's my aldehyde. There is another hydrogen there. We haven't been drawing it, so I'm not gonna draw it now. And the other thing we have is this alcohol. So we're almost done. All we have to do now is lose that proton. And I'm going to remove it as H+. You guys are aware that something comes along and pulls it off. But I'm just going to think about it as being... Oops. Okay, I'm going to put my H there, my hydrogen now, that's been there all along. And H plus was catalytic, okay? And we now have our final product. We made this alcohol and this aldehyde. Let me fix that arrow. just a reaction arrow uh, and that's our final product.
Okay, I'll come back and do some of the other uh, problems in this set in just a minute.